I'm talking about, uh, I started talking about the four phases of a, of a, of a life, it's sort of the, the life cycle of a, of a growth stock. And I think we used um, Ollie Bargain Basement as the example of, of the stock basing out, then having a big move and then topping out and then coming off. And what we talked about last week was the first phase. What was happening during that basing phase before the stock broke out and before the stock took off? And um, uh, this is, the, I mean, the, well, this is the current picture of, of Generac. But um, if you go back and change the date back to uh, back to the beginning of March of 2020, this was, you know, before. Yeah, well, this this shows this shows the move, and what I talked about last week was uh, yeah, right where you have your, the cursor. That was that was the basing phase. That was that's the first phase, and now what we're going to talk about is what happens during the second phase. This is where you get your biggest moves from stocks: is the the breakout and the second phase, and what's what's happening. And first, you have you and you you can see down. Uh, you can see the breakout on volume if you go down to the bottom of the chart. Mm -hmm. Right here. Uh, yeah, right here. there you go. The, you have the big breakout um, on volume, and I, I like to, to I like to go with bigger bases, but sometimes you get these from IPO bases and smaller bases. But I always like the longer the base, the lots of times the longer the move, and then what you get and um, is. Lots of times in this, it seems like you, you had it here, you had about 12 out of 15 days up and during that breakout move from as it, as it started coming up from 54 through the breakout at 60 and, and even for the next few days after that, you got 12 out of 15 days up with volume. And what you want to see in, in a stock that makes a huge move is you want to see unrelenting volume and price action to the upside. It's just day after day of buying. It's, it's, it's that great feeling when you wake up in the morning and you go, man, I, I, I'm on this stock and I just know it's going to be up again. <laughs> those, are the, those, are the, those are the fun times when you get aboard something that, that's turning out to be a big winner. Um, and you'll also see that the stock is above the 21 day, mm -hmm. the 50 day and the 200 day. And then as the stock moves along during this move, you'll see it gets support a number of times on that green line that 21 day. And then after it's already made a nice move, it went from 60 over to 84, it pulls back down to 75. Uh, and it gets support right on that 50 day moving average. And look what happens when that volume, when the stock pulls back to that 50 day moving average, the volume is lightening up. You don't get any days uh, you know, above average, average daily volume on, the, on that pullback. Maybe you get close, but, yeah. but that's what you wanna see in a pullback. You wanna see a dry up in volume. You also, if, if David, you can draw a trend yes. line from 84, 86 down yes. across. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yes, that's the type of pullback you want to get. You want a drifting down or you want a sideways action. And that seems to get give the time, the stock time, people take some profits for it to rest, to pull back. And, and, but you don't see any overwhelming volume on the downside. Um, and then one thing I've always found is that you rarely get during this entire point from, you know, from the start of this move in, in, in June at 60, all the way till, till all the way up until I think January for six months, you did not get three days in a row that were three lower lows and on increased volume. You, some days, you did get some days that were down three days in a row, but the volume wasn't very much. And there is the first time where you got three days down on increased mm -hmm. volume, but the stock still held above the 50 day. Um, and then eventually, you know, COVID hit at the, at the end of this chart. Um, but that's what you, you don't see. And, and so lots of times I just say, I'm gonna stay in this stock until I see three days down on big volume. And look at the move that you get. I mean, you're in there for six months and, and it's one of those things where you just sit back and you just let the stock go. 
and and not have to worry about it because it never gets any supply on the downside. So and then constant higher highs, higher lows, always in a nice uptrend. Um, the con consolidations on this move and a lot of great stocks are short and they rarely, yeah, again, they rarely last more than, than you know, th three weeks, uh, three weeks down. I mean, they're all mm -hmm. two weeks pull back and then it just takes off and goes again. Um, David, did, I, I be, yeah. oh, sorry to interrupt, but do you want to look at the weekly chart from the data graph is right now or stick with the daily? No, I mean, uh, yeah, since you yeah, talked about the weekly action too. Yeah, yeah, stick with the daily, daily just for a little bit longer. Um, okay. And and then also look at the look at the relative strength line also mm -hmm. in a nice in a nice uptrend. It slowed down. It based out there during that that December January period. Uh, it kind of went sideways, but that's still a nice uptrend. Uh, and then and then what happened at that final? You had kind of a blow off in that last. It went from a hundred to 118 mm -hmm. um, and then yeah then things started uh, the market started clamping down because of, of what COVID did but it's just that throughout that move the relentless buying the up days vastly outnumbered the down days anytime there was a consolidation it was sideways it was on lower volume or drifting down and it just kept on going and that's that's what you can that's what you'd love to see in a stock uh, that that is a big big winner. So, and then maybe you can you can give the big picture on the data graph. Yeah, let's do that now. Um, here we go. And yeah, they, yeah. So you can maybe put your cursor on where the move started there at sixty. Nice oh, yeah, long right base, here. and it's a little bit hard to see, but this was a five year base that this stock was going coming out of. The other thing that was so important about this is that this is a stock, a company that was able to move in the past. And, you know, if we went to, a, not that you have to move there now, but if we went to, yeah, if you went to a monthly chart, you'll see that this stock has oh. had success in the past and built a nice long base and then started the move. The, the interesting thing though, is that the earnings were actually stronger before the stock made the huge move. Uh, but, but now the, the earnings are coming on very, very strongly. Yeah, you can see, look at that, that, move, that stock went from 10 to 60 and then went sideways for five years and then took off and had a huge move. And I've seen this happen a number of times but I, I always want to see that in a stock that I'm looking at that's been basing for a while. Has it had the ability to move in the past? Because that tells me that there's something in within that company, either the management, the products, uh, the innovation that could create another move again. If it if it had gone if it had done nothing for for years and years, I mark that way down on on stocks. So always look for this in something that might be sitting out for a while so and then you know you can go to the current chart and the current chart uh is continuing to do well and this is this is something that i think we highlighted when it was coming out there mm -hmm. right there at that right here yeah. yeah 340 area yeah and and see it's doing it again i mean look how many days in a row it was up it had one day down i mean it's it's had three days down since since the beginning of since the beginning of June, so that's the type of stock that that is just so nice to be in. You wish all your stocks acted this way. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But and, um, but and and really, you only need a couple of these a year to get a really nice gain on your portfolio if you keep the losses small on the other ones that that don't work out and don't do this. I just want to make a point here that Chris has uh, really uh, uh, expounded on many, many Wind times. And, a, and, and a price uh, for Upwork. Okay. And and on the uh -huh. on the on the breakout, <laughs> can uh, you are not on mute? <laughs> okay. We, yeah. Well, I mean, just a full disclosure: we are uh, watching the breakout in UPWK. Uh, Upwork, which is on the watch list of leaderboard, we'll get to that shortly. But in any case, uh, you know the the breakout here, David, that you spoke of, is is very uh, instructional for everybody too in the current day because look at that RS line, while albeit not at the all time highs, 
was at the highest level since it was uh, forming this part of the base. And so yeah, that, and and, and yeah. you you can be a little um, subjective because mm -hmm. that relative strength line, the stock went through a climactic, almost a climactic move. It went from two forty three to three sixty four. Uh, to really get that relative strength line straight up back in in February, but then it mm -hmm. sat out and put in five months of basing, and then started and then started moving again. I'd like to go back to the data graphs chart, which I guess a lot of people don't know this, but that was pro that is and was produced by William O'Neill and Company, uh, which was serving institutional clients, insurance companies, banks, pension funds, mutual funds. Uh, and so they would do their orders through William and O'Neill Company and in return, get this incredible wealth of knowledge. David, would you like to expound uh, more upon all this incredible amount of data that we see beyond the price and volume action? Well, you know, this it's very interesting to see the progression of what this chart looked like. Um, it, it, the data graph itself back in the 60s, right. it, would, it had very, very little information. Now it has just about all the information you need. Um, and, you know, it, it just shows you all the can slim characteristics without going through all of them. It, it has all the can slim characteristics. It, it just has a more detail than Market Smith, but I would, you know, not to, not to frown upon this, you get 95% of what is on this chart in a market Smith chart. I mean, you've get all the earnings right. and you get the sales and things like this, but this, this is just more of an institutional type of product. And it, you know, it just goes into to more detail and it has, you know, it has news and, and a few more ratings and such, but market Smith, I mean, I've been using market Smith uh, exclusively for now, I don't know, 15 years since I stopped. Uh, well, I, I, I stopped my, my hedge fund back in 2014, but uh, MarketSmith is, is very comparable to what you're seeing here. I, I want to highlight here, David, a few things that you, you noted. One is uh, take a look at this earnings line, which is basically the sum of four quarters worth of earnings per share. And before that breakout that David had highlighted at 60, you can see that the earnings line uh, already was shooting into new high ground, at least within this uh, this time range. And also, David, I, I, you know, it's interesting here. We had uh, the end of the quarter right here, the end of, I believe this is March of 2019. And then this vertical line highlights when the actual results results were reported. Uh, right. So, you know, roughly a month uh, after that. So that's the vertical line. And you can see that there was a very nice reaction. And on that reaction, it was partly uh, uh, perhaps uh, inspired by this acceleration in the sales and earnings growth, as you can see here, yeah. uh, 2% in the, I guess the quarter end of December for earnings, 14% for sales, but they, they both accelerated. I, 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 I was surprised when I went back and I looked at that, that the earnings though for the mm -hmm. next three quarters were not that strong, but the stock made a huge move and, and maybe people just knew or the investors just knew that this, these, these people were positioned in, in the right place for the next, the next so many years because of now the problems we have with our grid going down and turning off power. People are just looking for backup generators. I, I, bought, I bought one, a backup generator back Back in, uh, I guess it was January of 2000, because I had just gone through the uh, fire. A fire came through here in Malibu, and I was out of power for 18 days. So, anyway, I saw a need for it, but uh, and now it, it's got so many uh, applications across the country. So, mm. uh, also, uh, I, I'd like you to comment about the fact that, well, this is obviously later into the move. Uh, I guess six six months after that breakout, but it says here, as of the end of 2019, there were almost 600, maybe, yeah, almost 670 mutual funds that owned 64% of the stock. Uh, and you can see here, there's a lot of ends next to the amount of shares in units of a thousand, uh, including Lord Abbott was in there, William Blair, Invesco, a lot of big names, obviously Fidelity is in there too. And a lot of these were brand new yeah. positions, uh, even six months into the move. 
which yeah, is well, remarkable. that's and, and that's what you want to see, and you want to see right. an increase in the number of uh, a sponsorship, and you can find that on MarketSmith. You're not going to find that. Well, you I guess you can find the names, but well, I always look to see uh, is that sponsorship increasing uh, th through that number, and that's uh, that's always one more positive that uh, that you want in a stock that's starting to make a move. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to zoom in on that part, uh, but uh, no, you, can, at least... you can you can see it now. I think uh, in, yeah. in the, the current chart. Okay, uh, good, good. So. And then going up to here, uh, I, I guess what's what's interesting is that the the earnings estimates going forward at the time were were not exactly canceled material. But David, uh, any 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 thought about that? Well, if if you know if the stock has had a good growth in the in the past and um, and the stock is setting up perfectly, um, then you got to just <clears throat> if the earnings aren't as huge as you'd like it, it's it's still good to get a position because after a nice long base like that and a setup like that, then I think the the stock price is anticipating earnings earnings to come. And sometimes those yeah. those estimates they're they're so wrong in terms of how big those earnings can be. Uh, quick, another follow up here. Uh, you, you can see in the data graph that for many many weeks, and this is obviously well past the breakout time, but the up versus down volume ratio uh, was well north of the neutral rating of one point zero. Uh, We've said on the show that William O'Neill is a uh, is a big fan of using the up down volume ratio during your time uh, working with Bill uh, for the new USA Growth Fund and so forth. Uh, was that at all uh, a statistic you looked at, or yeah, you the, focused? The, yeah, it was. It was. It, it wouldn't be a primary statistic, but it would just be one more positive that that would yeah. go into deciding on whether a stock should be bought or not. Uh, but it's it's not a, a, a break. Uh, you know, some, sometimes that can be swayed by a few big days of volume. So it's just one more added uh, factor to look at. Just one one thing I'd like to highlight is that uh, when when I uh, like they, like David and Chris are kind of looking for those mega big winners, really like to find those with the excellent ROE return on equity. Uh, preferably not not just simply 17% or 20%, but 30, 35, 40%, 45%. Uh, I remember Cisco Systems having that kind of number in 1990, Microsoft back in 1986. Now, in the case of Generac, the the, the long-term debt to equity ratio is high, well above 100%, but you know that notwithstanding, uh, you can see that this company had a nice record of very, very robust return on equity, ranging from the 24% in 2011 to as high as 20, as 77% back in 2013, obviously boosted by probably a lower shareholders equity because there was a lot of debt. But uh, any last comments on this chart or the, the daily chart? No, it's it's just this is phase two. This is what happens next week. We'll get into phase three, which is a topping action, uh, okay. and I'll I'll bring some examples of what happens when a stock is topping. But these three, these four phases, you should get in your mind, get them memorized, get you know photograph in your mind of what these different phases look like, so you know where you are in the progression of a of a of a growth stocks move. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.